Want 10% off your MTG singles? Go to Flipside Gaming and enter the promo code POWER in all caps to receive 10% off $10 or more. Want to see extra videos? Sign up to our Patreon and get access to our Discord, early access to videos, Patreon-only videos, and much more. Need a better life tracker? Download the Gauntlet app for your phone. It keeps track of your life totals, counters, win rate, and so much more. It's free, so go check it out. More info is in the description. Thanks for watching. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to Playing with Power MTG, where we play with the most powerful cards in the most powerful formats. Welcome everyone to the lightning round. Last episode had us battling the new commanders from 2019, and it was an epic battle. But a lot more actually happened that night. These commanders ended up being very formidable against one another, and we thought that it would be best to show you exactly how formidable they were. A quick thanks to all of our Patreons for their support. We really could not do this without you. If you'd like to become a patron, please check out the link in the description below and check out some of the perks our patrons get. You can also show your support by liking this video and subscribing to our channel if you're not already a subscriber. It really helps out a lot. Now, let's start out by showcasing our fighters this evening. First, we have Ryan, piloting Anya Falconrath. Ryan's opening hand contains a Sarkum's Triumph, Soul Ring, Big Game Hunter, Wooded Foothills, Weirded Vampire, and a Bloodhall Priest. Next, we have Garrett, piloting Volrath, the Shape Stealer. Garrett's opening hand contains Ad Nauseam, Cephalid Colosseum, Carpet of Flowers, Mox Diamond, Devoted Druid, Limdul's Vault, and a Tropical Island. After that, we have Mike, piloting Elsha of the Infinite. Mike's opening hand contains a Talisman of Curiosity, Mana Vault, Time Twister, Exotic Orchard, Command Tower, Personal Tutor, and a Plains. Finally, we have Adam, piloting Kirik, son of Yagma. Adam's opening hand contains two snow-covered swamps, Blood Pet, Inventor's Fair, Reanimate, Soul Ring, and a Nykthos, Shrine to Nyx. Without further ado, let's kick off this manifestation of masochistic members marauding their magic mess. Mike wins the Fork in the Toaster challenge and gets to start us off. Mike plays a Command Tower for turn. He casts a Mana Vault. He then casts Talisman of Creativity. He taps his talisman to cast Serum Vision. With an explosive turn one start, Mike passes. Adam plays a snow-covered swamp. He casts a Soul Ring. He passes. Garrett plays a tropical island. He casts Mox Diamond, discarding Cephalid Colosseum. He then casts Devoted Druid. He ends his turn. Ryan plays a Wooded Foothills. He cracks it for a Badlands. He also casts a Soul Ring. He ends his turn. During his draw step, Mike takes a damage through Mana Vault. He casts a Talisman of Progress. He then casts Pyroclasm, which basically is just targeting Garrett's Druid. With nothing else, Mike ships his turn. Adam plays a Snow-Covered Swamp. He taps four and pays six life to cast his commander, Carrick, son of Yagma. He pays two life and casts Blood Pet. Carrick triggers and Adam puts a plus one plus one counter on him. All through, he passes. Garrett plays a Flooded Strand for turn. He casts a Carpet of Flowers, which feels pretty awful considering no opponent currently controls an island. He gives the turn to Ryan. Ryan draws a card for turn, looks at the board state, looks at his hand, decides to hold up, and passes the turn. During his draw step, Mike takes the damage to his Mana Ball. He plays a Plains for turn. He casts a Personal Tutor, fetching up a gamble onto the top of his library. He follows up by casting Time Twister. Everyone looks at him kind of strange, and that's when Mike realized he missed the sequencing a little bit, and now has to shuffle away his gamble he just tutored. In response, and in order to ensure the combos are kept out of Garrett's graveyard, Adam pays two life and casts Cremate, targeting Devoted Druid from Garrett's graveyard. Garrett responds by cracking his Flooded Strand to fetch up an Underground Sea. Cremate resolves, then Time Twister resolves, and everyone shuffles hands and graveyards into their library and draws a new seven. Next, Mike casts Gamble. Apparently he drew that after they twisted, so he searches up a card into his hand and discards a card at random, which is a silence. He casts a Mana Crypt and follows up with a Scroll Rack. With a pretty good setup, he passes to Adam. Adam plays an Ancient Tomb for turn. He casts Insidious Dreams, discarding two cards, one of which is Gravecrawler, and fetching two cards onto the top of his library. He casts a Dark Confidant. He attacks Mike with Kyrick. Mike loses six, and Adam gains six. Adam passes. At the end of Adam's turn, 
Garrett casts a mystical tutor, fetching up a windfall into the top of his library. Garrett plays a flooded strand again, and everyone really starts thinking about cutting everyone's decks better next time. He cracks it for a breeding pool, into play untapped, paying two life. He casts Windfall. Ryan, wanting to actually play a spell from his hand before it gets wheeled again, and to make sure the rest of the group doesn't refill their hands, and to make sure Garrett doesn't get more wind cons into his graveyard, casts Pyroblast, countering the spell. With nothing else, Garrett passes. Ryan plays a Blood Crypt, into play untapped, paying two life. He casts his Commander, Anya Falconrath. He ends his turn. During his upkeep, Mike loses his Mana Crypt trigger and takes three damage. He also activates his scroll rack for four, setting aside four cards in his hand, drawing four, and putting the other four on top of his library. Still in his upkeep, he casts Enlightened Tutor, fetching up a Mystic Remora onto the top of his library. During his draw step, he takes the damage through Mana Ball. In his main phase, he casts a Soul Ring. He then casts Verity Circle. With that card being absolutely brutal to Ryan's strategy, he responds by activating Anya, discarding Nightshade Assassin, untapping Anya, and drawing a card. He activates her again, discarding Gibbering Descent, Grave Scrabbler, Ecor Slick, and a Twins at Marauer Estate, all untapping and drawing. He then finishes up by tapping and discarding Tarnished Citadel and drawing a card. Then Verity Circle resolves. Next, Mike taps his Talisman to cast Mystic Remora. All set up for success, he gives a turn to Adam. During his upkeep, Adam reveals Reanimate through Dark Confidant. In his main phase, he pays two life and casts Buried Alive. It resolves, and he searches up a Dregscape Zombie, Razakath the Foul-Blooded, and a Villus, Broker of Blood, into his graveyard. He then casts Reanimate, targeting Razakath. It resolves, Razakath enters, and Adam loses 8 life. He activates Razakath, sacrificing Dark Confidant, and paying 2 life. In response, Mike casts Swords to Plowshares, targeting Razakath. In response to that, Adam activates Razakath again, sacking Blood Pet, and paying 2 more life. It resolves, and Adam fetches up a card into his hand. He then responds by paying two life and casting Calling the Weak, sacking Razakath to save it. Swords fizzles, and then his other search trigger resolves, and he fetches up another card into his hand. Next, Adam activates Dregscape Zombie, unearthing it onto the battlefield. He pays two life through Carrick again to cast Gravecrawler from his graveyard. He casts Animate Dead, targeting Razakath, and it re-enters. He activates Razakath, paying 2 life and sacking Gravecrawler to fetch up a card into his hand. He then casts Woody Tutor, which is an Aether Flux Reservoir. He demonstrates a loop where he pays 2 life, casts Gravecrawler, gains life through Aether Flux, and then sacks it again to Razakath enough times to gain enough life to shoot everyone with Aether Flux. Mike brings back Elsha this game, and his opening hand contains a Hallowed Fountain, Lotus Petal, Island, Mystic Remora, Ethereum Sculptor, Jataxian Probe, and an Enlightened Tutor. Garrett is playing Volrath again, and keeps a hand with Cavern of Souls, Command Tower, Mystical Tutor, Ancient Tomb, Chrome Mox, Force of Vigor, and a Yavamaya Coast. Folger joins us this game, playing Atla Palani. He keeps an opening hand with Marsh Flats, Chrome Mox, Ulamog the Infinite Gyre, Birds of Paradise, Savage Swipe, Guttural Response, and a Satessian Tactics. Ryan is playing Anya again this game, and keeps a hand with an Exotic Orchard, Bloodstained Mire, Senseless Rage, Strong Kirk Occultist, Monk Salvage, and a Mausoleum Secrets. Mike gets to start us off. Mike plays an island for turn. He casts a Mystic Remora, and everyone immediately hates him forever. He casts a Lotus Petal, and passes the turn. Folger plays a Marsh Flats for turn. He cracks it for a Temple Garden, into play untapped, paying two life. He casts a Birds of Paradise. Folger tells everyone not to feed the fish, and everyone agrees. Folger passes. Garrett plays a command tower for turn. He turns to Folger with a menacing smile and casts Chrome Mox, breaking the fish pact immediately, and imprints Force of Vigor. He said it was for a good cause because he then casts a Hermit Druid. But with all bets off, Garrett passes. Ryan plays a Bloodstained Mire for turn. He cracks it for a Badlands. He casts a Soul Ring, again to the Lament of Folger. Ryan tells Folger he needs to deal with a turn 1 Hermit Druid above a turn 1 fish. Ryan ends his turn. During his upkeep, Mike pays for his Mystic Remora. He casts a Taxian Probe, paying 2 life and targeting Folger. He looks at Folger's hand and draws a card. He plays a Hallowed Fountain into play untapped, paying 2 life. He then casts Grape Shot, targeting Folger's Bird and Hermit Druid. With nothing else, he passes. 
Soldier plays a forest for turn and passes as well. Garrett plays an ancient tomb for turn and also passes. Ryan plays an exotic orchard for turn. He casts his commander, Anya Falconrath. He passes. During his upkeep, Mike lets his mystic Remora die. Also during his upkeep, he casts Enlightened Tutor, fetching up a Mana Crypt onto the top of his library. In his main phase, he casts Mana Crypt. He then casts Azorius Signet. He follows up with an Ethereum Sculptor. All through, Mike passes. Folger starts off his turn by casting Chrome Mox, imprinting Guttural Response. He then casts Survival of the Fittest. He gives the turn to Garrett. At the end of Folger's turn, Garrett casts Mystical Tutor, fetching up a Shallow Grave, which is a big problem. Garrett starts off his turn by tapping his Ancient Tomb to cast Shallow Grave, targeting Hermit Druid. Hermit Druid enters and is given haste. He activates Hermit Druid, flipping his deck into his graveyard. Narc Amoeba triggers and enters the battlefield. He plays the Yavamaya Coast, triggering Blood Gas, and it enters the battlefield. This is when Garrett lets everyone know that his Dread Return is not in his graveyard, but instead in his hand, so he reluctantly passes the turn. At the end of Garrett's turn, Ryan activates Anya, discarding Senseless Rage, untapping Anya, and drawing a card. He activates Anya again, discarding Biting Rain, Stromkirk Occultist, Psychotic Haze, Grave Scrappler, and a Skirk Prospector. He then casts Mog Salvage for its alternate cost, targeting Mike's Ethereum Sculptor. Then, Ryan begins his actual turn. Ryan plays a Luxury Sweep for turn. He casts a Demonic Tutor. In response, Garrett casts Memory's Journey, targeting Reanimate, Shallow Grave, and Necromancy in his graveyard. They shuffle in, and then Ryan fetches up a card into his hand. Ryan passes the turn. During his upkeep, Mike casts Mystical Tutor, fetching up a Time Twister onto the top of his library. He casts Time Twister. Everyone shuffles hands and graveyards into libraries and draws seven. Garrett feels kind of good and kind of bad at the same time about it, though. He plays a command tower for turn. He casts Mystic Remora. He ends his turn. At the end of Mike's turn, Folger activates Survival of the Fittest, discarding Dryad Arbor and searching up a Dockside Extortionist into his hand. Folger plays a Wooded Foothills for turn. He casts Dockside Extortionist. Extortionist enters and Folger creates five treasures. He casts his commander, Atla Palan. He follows up with a Sylvan Library. Folger passes. Garrett starts off his turn by tapping Ancient Tomb to cast Gilded Drake. Folger knows where that's going, but the Drake resolves. Gilded Drake triggers when it enters the battlefield, and in response, Folger casts Swords to Plowshares, targeting the Drake. Drake exiles, and Garrett gains three life. Garrett then taps his Yafamai Coast to cast Birds of Paradise. He then casts an Elves of Deep Shadow. He attacks Mike with Narc Amoeba and Blood Gas, and then passes the turn. At the end of Garrett's turn, Ryan activates Anya, discarding Reckless Worm, From Under the Floorboards, Murderous Compulsion, and Restless Dreams. Ryan then casts Mausoleum Secrets, fetching up a Vampiric Tutor into his hand. During Ryan's upkeep, he casts Vampiric Tutor. He fetches up a card onto the top of his library and loses two life. He then draws the card he tutored. In his main phase, he activates Anya, discarding World Gorger Dragon, and drawing a card. He casts Animate Dead, targeting his World Gorger. Animate Dead resolves, and the Dragon Loop begins. He generates infinite mana and loots with Anya, discarding and drawing until he finds what he's looking for, which is a Comet Storm, to shoot the entire table. Garrett brings back Volrath this game, and keeps a hand of Windfall, Flash, Horseshoe Crab, Windswept Teeth, Sylvan Library, Breeding Pool, and Eternal Witness. Ryan brings back Anya this game, and keeps a hand with Mana Confluence, Polluted Delta, Blood Crypt, Strength of Lunacy, Violent Eruption, and Dance of the Dead. Folger brings back Atla this game, and keeps a hand with Savage Swipe, Mirror Entity, Kasali Pride Mage, Bloom Tender, Plains, Utopia Sprawl, and a Marsh Flats. Mike brings back Elsha this game, and keeps a hand with Command Tower, Mana Confluence, Island, Preordain, Cloud Key, and a Verity Circle. And Folger starts us off. Folger plays a Forest for turn. He casts Utopia Sprawl. Naming red. He passes. Garrett plays a breeding pool into play tapped. He passes the turn. Ryan plays a polluted delta for turn. He also passes. Mike plays a command tower for turn. He casts preordain, scrying and drawing. He passes back to Folger. Folger plays a marsh flats for turn. He casts bloom tender. He gives the turn to Garrett. Garrett also plays a marsh flats for turn. He cracks it for an underground scene. He casts sylvan library. He ships the turn to Ryan. At the end of Garrett's turn, 
Ryan cracks his polluted delta for a Badlands. Ryan plays a Mana Confluence for turn and passes. Mike plays an Island for turn and also passes. At the end of Mike's turn, Folger cracks his Marsh Flats for a Temple Garden into Blay Tapped. Folger plays a Plains for turn. He casts his Commander, Atla Pilani. He taps his Bloom Tender for Naya and casts Mirror Entity and holy smokes Folger, it's only turn three, man. Knowing the game is over unless someone does something, Mike goes for the strategic play and casts Chain of Vapor, targeting Garrett's Sylvan Library. Now you may be wondering why he may have targeted Garrett's permanent instead of just bouncing Folger's permanents directly. Basically, this puts Garrett into a really tough spot. By choosing Garrett's permanent, Garrett has to essentially sacrifice a land if he doesn't want it in the game, but it will put Garrett way back. It's a risky play because Garrett can choose not to continue the chain and it puts it on everyone else to try and stop him. So what does Garrett do? Garrett observes the board state and decides that he will leave it up to the fates. Chain resolves, Garrett bounces his library and does not sack a land to copy it. He decides to let the chips fall where they may and see if anyone has another answer. No one does, unfortunately, and Mirror Entity resolves. Folger activates Mirror Entity for zero, holds priority, puts 100,000 extra activations on the stack for zero as well, continues to hold priority, and pays two life to cast Mutagenic Growth, targeting Atla, keeping her from dying. He then passes priority. One by one, everyone else passes, and the loop begins. Bloom Tender and Mirror Entity become zero zeros with all creature types, which includes Egg. They die, and Atla triggers. Folger flips from his library and reveals Perforos and puts it onto the battlefield. This loop continues, killing creatures, flipping them, dealing two damage to each opponent with Perforos, and reshuffling his graveyard back into his library with Ulamog until the Perforos triggers kill everyone at the table. Ryan brings Anya this game and keeps an opening hand with a Chrome Mox, Tarnished Citadel, Simeon Spirit Guide, Rite of Flame, Chaos Warp, Sulphurous Springs, and a Twins of Marauer Estate. Garrett brings Volrath this game and keeps an opening hand with Necromancy, Wall of Roots, Vampiric Tutor, Soul Ring, Apprentice Necromancer, Tropical Island, and a Watery Grave. Mike brings Elsha this game and keeps an opening hand with Island, Tundra, Hallowed Fountain, Mox Diamond, Chrome Mox, Grape Shot, and a Swords to Plowshares. Folger brings Atla Palani this game and keeps an opening hand with Two Forests, Sacred Foundry, Survival of the Fittest, and a Mirror Entity and Garrett starts us off. Garrett plays a Watery Grave into play untapped, paying two life. He casts a Vampiric Tutor. He fetches up a card onto the top of his library and loses two life. Garrett passes the turn. Ryan plays a Sulphurous Springs for turn. He casts a Chrome Mox, imprinting Rite of Flame. He exiles Simeon Spirit Guide from his hand, taps Sulphurous Springs for black, and casts Anya, turn one. Feeling pretty good, he passes to Mike. Mike plays a Tundra for turn. He casts a Mana Crypt. He casts a Mox Diamond, discarding an island. He then casts a Chrome Mox, imprinting Swords to Plowshares. Then, stealing Ryan's Thunder, casts his own Commander, Elsha, on turn one as well. Everyone at the other end of the table starts sweating, and Mike ends his turn. Folger, in the spirit of keeping hype going, plays a Sacred Foundry tapped and passes. Garrett plays a Tropical Island for turn. He casts a Hermit Druid. He passes the turn. At the end of Garrett's turn, Ryan activates Anya, discarding Twins of Marara Estate, untapping Anya, and drawing a card. He activates Anya again, discarding Sunscorched Desert and drawing. He then begins his turn. Ryan plays a Tarnished Citadel for turn and passes. During his upkeep, Mike casts Scroll Rack from the top of his library. In his main phase, he casts Serum Visions from the top of his library. He holds priority and casts Soul Ring from the top of his library as well. He passes priority, and Ryan responds by casting Chaos Warp, targeting Scroll Rack. It resolves, Mike shuffles in his Scroll Rack, and then flips the top card of his library, which is an Ethereum Sculptor, which is much worse than a Scroll Rack. Then Soul Ring resolves, and Serum Vision resolves. Mike draws two, and scries two to the bottom. Mike casts Grape Shot, targeting Anya and Hermit Druid. In response, Ryan activates Anya, discarding Blood Mad Vampire, untapping Anya and drawing a card. He activates Anya again, discarding Call to the Netherworld, untapping Anya, and casting it for its madness cost, which is zero. He returns the twins to his hand and discards a card. He activates Anya again, discarding the twins, untapping and drawing. 
He then activates her one more time, discarding Shadow of the Grave and drawing. Then Anya and the Hermit Druid die. Mike then attacks Ryan with Elsha and gives a turn to Folger. Folger plays a forest for turn. He casts a Survival of the Fittest. He ends his turn. Garrett plays a Nurturing Peatland for turn. He taps the Peatland to cast Wall of Roots. He adds a counter to his Wall of Roots to cast Soul Ring. He then casts Necromancy, targeting Hermit Druid in his graveyard. Hermit Druid enters, and Garrett passes the turn. Ryan plays a Marsh Flats for turn. He passes. Mike starts off his turn by casting Enlightened Tutor, fetching up a Sensei's Divining Top onto the top of his library. He plays an Exotic Orchard for turn. He casts Sensei's Divining Top from the top of his library. He holds priority and casts Azorius Signet from the top of his library as well. In response, Ryan casts Red Elemental Blast, targeting Ethereum Sculptor. In response, Mike casts Dovin's Veto. In response, Ryan taps his Sulphur Springs to cast Tainted Pact. He holds priority and cracks his Marsh Flats. He fetches up a Badlands. Then Mike responds to the stack by casting Rolling Earthquake for one off the top of his library. Hermit Druid dies again, and everyone takes one. Then Tainted Pact resolves. He flips until he finds a Slaughter Pact and stops. He casts Slaughter Pact, targeting Ethereum Sculptor again. With that, Ethereum dies, and the rest of the stack resolves. Mike spins his top to look at the top three of his library. He casts Preordained from the top of his library. He attacks Ryan with Elsha. With nothing else, Mike passes. Folger plays a forest for turn. He casts Sylvan Library. He gives the turn to Garrett. Garrett starts off his turn by casting Brainstorm. He then taps his Peatland to cast Shallow Grave. It resolves and Hermit Druid enters the battlefield with haste. He activates Hermit Druid, milling his entire library. Narcabiba triggers and he puts it onto the battlefield. He casts Dread Return from his graveyard with its flashback cost, sacking three creatures. He brings back Necrotic Ooze. With no other responses, Garrett shows his loot. Necrotic Ooze now has all activated abilities of all cards in all graveyards. Garrett activates Wall of Roots ability, putting a negative one, negative one counter on it to add a green. He activates Blighted Bats ability with the green to give the ooze haste. He activates Channeler Initiate's ability to add a mana, removing a negative one, negative one counter. He activates Devoted Druid's ability, putting a negative one, negative one counter on it and untapping. He demonstrates his loop of tapping and untapping to get infinite mana. He then uses Walking Ballista's ability to add 100,000 plus one plus one counters to the use. He then activates Walking Ballista's ability to shoot everyone at the table until they are dead. Ladies and gentlemen, what a night it was. Congrats to all the players on their respective wins and explosive decks. These decks were a lot of fun to play with and against each other, and it was amazing to see each of them go off in the way they did that night. Folger's Atla deck was really cool with its creature-based strategies, which is right up Folger's alley. His god hand in his game shows you just how powerful that combo can be. Garrett's Volrath deck was really neat with its intricate Hermit Druid Necrotic Ooze combo. He threatened to win multiple times that night. Ryan's Anya deck was his own experiment, drawing from the inspiration of other decks out there, and he had a fair bit of interaction and answers, as well as very early combo win potential. Mike's deck is never empty on board, with answers from hand and library, and can always get out of a pinch. Elsha can be built in so many ways, and that's what's great about her. Adam's Kyrick deck was a perfect example of what life as a resource can do for you. This commander is super broken, and we love him to death. There is no player of the game or most valuable card this time, because each deck performs so well in their respective games. There were so many valuable cards that no one card could be chosen for this episode. Well, that about wraps it up for the lightning round. Tune in next time when we duke it out to see who will be king of the competitive EDH table. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time.